So guys, Warzone 2 is out, and against all odds, contradicting the incredible, amazing technical state of the main game, yes, I'm being sarcastic, the game is a glitchy mess. Loads of people are complaining, the optimization is even worse than the Modern Warfare 2 main game. People are experiencing lags, desyncs, glitches, crashes, low FPS, and on top of that, we get videos like this one that report that they are in some parts of the maps, like in Shoot House, and this one, which is literally like a copy and paste map. We get invisible walls for some reason there are invisible walls that stop your bullets from going through to your enemies here's another clip that kind of underlines what this is and check it out he's shooting him no nope, no nope. the, the bullets get blocked from an invisible wall it's a disaster okay it's not going well some people report that they can't even download the game at all so despite them having obviously like great player numbers it's a glitchy mess and many people are complaining and this is obviously also reflected in the steam reviews of the game where it currently sits at mostly negative with only 37% of the 5,500 user reviews being positive. Earlier I looked, it was still 38%. So we're kind of on a downward slope here. What I want to do in this video, I want to fly through some of those reviews with you. Because not only are they entertaining, they also offer us a window into the current state of Warzone 2 and the problems that people are experiencing, which there are plenty of. Let's get into it. Not recommended. Activision. <laughs> That's the reason. Fair enough. It's not, it's not the worst reason. It tells me to purchase Modern Warfare 2 even though I'm only trying to play Warzone and I was allowed to play one match before this happened. Seen quite a few people reporting this. Now, I'm not aware of this. Is that is that something that you guys experience as well? Leave that down in the comments if you're having that problem as well, like that you want to play Warzone and after one or like a few matches, it says, well, if you want to play more Warzone, then you got to purchase the main game, Modern Warfare 2. I don't know if that's the case. I heard that they're limiting the DMZ mod to people who purchase the main game. I don't know. Leave your experience with that down in the comment section below because, again, I've seen quite a few uh, reviews that reflect that. Recommend it. All right. Recommending that as well. Oh, another one. Recommend it. Okay. He kind of enjoys it, right? Some people maybe just enjoy the torture that this game can be with all the crashes and the glitches and the, the torture it puts you through. You know, it might, might just be right for some people. Not recommend it. This review requires a restart. <laughs> It's true. And once you restart it, then you need to install the shaders again. Okay, that's going to take 10 minutes because, you know, but then you can play the game at low FPS with crashes, but then, you know, you, you can play it. This game is a prime example of a company experimenting with stupid people by pushing boundaries of how much of an unfinished game they can release until people stop paying ridiculous amounts of money for overpriced skins. And yet people are still paying $100 for some trashy skin and they wonder why each year Call of Duty is getting worse. This game is like rotten food. It makes you sick. Avoid like plague. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's pretty harsh, okay? That's that's harsh criticism. Do people actually pay $100 for a skin? Is that a thing? I, I wouldn't say it is. Uh, probably it's quite exaggerated, but it gets loads of awards and rewards. Clever, nine clever medals in this review. I'm not sure it's particularly clever, but surely the person is very angry. Not recommended. This game crashes before it even opens. Rolled back NVIDIA drivers, crash. Updated driver, crash. Updated driver again to the one released today. What happened? Crash. I've seen this as well. There was a video by this one guy who was playing actually with Dr. Disrespect. I think I can't play it because there's copyrighted music in the background. But he had a tweet saying something like, here's my first day with Warzone 2. And it was just crash after, I mean, he obviously edited the crashes together. But it was like in one evening, he had like seven or eight crashes. And you could see the game was running fine. He's some kind of pro gamer. So he's definitely on some kind of high-end rig. But it still crashes. I don't experience crashes. Some people do. It's just so annoying if it happens. And I don't think it's just because some people have like a low end graphics card. It's just at the moment, it's not identifiable what exactly causes some systems to have permanent crashes in the game. It's really strange. Not meant to be played with controller. Sensitivity is weird. So to aim at an enemy takes like half an hour. And then connection issues in the lobby unplayable so far. Matchmaking is also taking forever. P.S. What's so funny? My aim assist doesn't work. It's like, oh, oh no, your aimbot doesn't work. That's such a shame, right? That's so unfair. I mean, PC players have to aim by themselves and your aim assist doesn't work. I don't know. I don't feel empathy with that comment, okay? Because, bro, if you want to play with the controller, then play with the controller. Don't get aim assist. And I've seen videos, people aim at enemies, like, and, and it just literally snaps onto the enemies while they're using a controller. It's pathetic, man. It's basically an aimbot. I mean, I understand there are different tiers and it's not always this way. It's not always as efficient as it was in this video and all that. But still, dude, like... 
I mean, then Activision has to put all the controller players in a separate lobby, okay? And let all the controller players like turn around, slow motion, takes half an hour to aim at an enemy and leave the PC, mouse and keyboard players to, to themselves. It doesn't make sense to merge them into one lobby and then give one of them like that kind of benefit, in my, in my opinion, okay? Played one DMZ match with a friend and then asked us to buy Cod Modern Warfare 2 to let us play in a party again with completing the match. Kudos to the team for the next level monetization scheme right here and for the person who suggested Battle Pass and Cosmetics was not enough. Enough, you should get a race. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that really sucks. Okay, I wasn't aware of this again. It's one of those comments. I don't know if it also applies to Warzone. I don't think so. But if you play one DMZ match and they give you like kind of a taster, they're like, yeah, you guys can play one match. It's all good. And then they try to cash in on you. Dude, man. Like just from the start, say this mode is only available with the full version. Don't give people this one match taster. It, that just sucks. Tells me to purchase Modern Warfare 2, even though I'm only trying to play Warzone. And I was allowed to play one match before this happened. So I'm not sure it only applies to DMZ. This sounds like a lot of people who just tried to play Warzone are being asked to purchase the full game. That just sucks, man. And that would also explain the mostly negative reviews, right? Because people expect, I mean, it was promised as a free to play game. You can't be like, yeah, it's free to play for one round. And then you have to, come on, man. If that's what Activision and Infinity Ward are doing, they're going to ruin this game so hard because obviously it won't have any longevity. You can already see the reviews being terrible. This word is going to spread like wildfire and soon you're going to have all the people just not playing it anymore. Also beyond that, like Warzone 2 in and in itself is just not that good, at least in my opinion. If it would be like an outstanding, brilliant game that's really well optimized, runs with 150 FPS on every machine and it's super fun, maybe you would get away with scam methods like this. But the way it currently sits and the way the game currently plays, nah, man, this is gonna put the nail in the coffin of this game if they can't fix that. Freaking won't even open. Fix it or I'll never play COD again. I hope you're scared, Activision. <laughs> hey, Activision. Keep an eye on Tommy's XX, okay? He or she won't play the game anymore if you don't fix this. You should be scared. I don't get how this game is supposed to be an upgrade from Warzone 1. It still stutters like there's no tomorrow. All movement was removed to make it even clunkier than PUBG. There's no loot when you drop. I struggle to find even a starting gun. They removed equal odds of winning a battle now. Whoever sees the other player first wins. And even if you both have incredible aim and god speed reaction time, whoever looted better armor wins. It sucks. Well done, Activision. So I do agree on a statement that it really is not an upgrade from Warzone 1. I remember when Warzone 1 came out and we played it, there were just so many decisions that they made. Like I can, top of my head, I can think of one. For example, I remember Warzone 1 that they removed this idea of an inventory where you have an inventory and it can get full and you need to, like that's a PUBG thing. They removed it. You can just keep on looting. Sure, you might need to replace like a special item. You would all, you can only carry two weapons. So weapons would automatically be replaced if you pick up another one. But they had so many little improvements to this Battle Royale gameplay and they just smoothed it out around the edges and made it really intuitive and fluid. And I really loved that. And now they're bringing a lot of clunky elements including this backpack that can fill up and you have to exchange item and manage your inventory they bring that back it's like why would you do that it's not fun this stuff is not fun it really feels like a downgrade to me as well from warzone one recommended one of the better restart simulators out there if you like restarting your game right and like launching it and, and requiring another restart and installing shaders this is the game for you you will love it. Your drivers are outdated. Updates drivers. The game requires an update. Restart. Restarts. Picks a name for your Xbox game attack automatically. Changes name. This game requires an update. Restart. Restarts. Open the game once restarted. Game crashes. <laughs> It sounds ridiculous, but this is the actual experience for a lot of people out there. That's how they experience this game. It's a disaster. Recommended. When everyone is closet cheating, no one is. <laughs> okay? If everyone's hacking, then nobody's hacking. It's great. The game is great. Highly recommend it. The game can be good if they just fix everything to be good. <laughs> if you have a really terrible game and you fix everything that sucks about the game, you have a good game. This could be a great game. So <laughs> this is a great review. I like people who can see optimism in the most negative things. Okay, so there you go. Well done, Chambly. The game won't run properly on a system with a one-year-old Xeon processor, 96 gigabytes of RAM, and an RTX 2060. I guess I have to upgrade. Yeah, I mean, I'm on an RTX 3070, and I'm, like, struggling, so I guess an RTX 2060 just doesn't do it. Uh, for that game, you need more power to even run it at like a bare minimum of 60, 70 frames. The optimization is trash as hell. Stuttering and FPS drops are common. 
Game looks worse than Warzone 1. What the hell? Even the LSS can't help. It's true. I mean, I wouldn't say it looks worse than Warzone 1. It kind of looks similar. I would say maybe there's like a minor visual improvement in some areas. Then again, other areas look worse, it feels like. But definitely the visual upgrade does not justify the frame drops. And what he says is actually correct. Like sometimes you play with like 70 frames and you're in the same kind of area and the frames just drop down to 30. You're like, this is the same as I was at like 10 seconds ago. I was at 80 frames, now I'm at 30. It seems to have no consistency in terms of the frames. If it would be, you know, like between 60 and 90 frames and it never drops under 60 or something like this and it could keep that consistency, fair enough. I guess people could live with it. But that's not the case. The optimization is so terrible that it keeps dropping to 30, then you're at 80, then you're 60, you're 30. And it's unplayable. This is not how this works. I didn't even play a match. Just opened the game, but it was kind of late, so I went to bed. Then I woke up to a perma ban. Do better Activision. <laughs> Again, these are reports we see a lot. A lot of people say, no, no, no. If you get perma ban, then you were definitely hacking. There are loads of reports, also in the Steam reviews of the, the main game, Modern Warfare 2, of people saying, I just played three rounds, got a perma ban. I've never hacked in my life. And of course, possibly these people did hack and they get banned for the right reasons. But the amount of comments like that tells me something else is at play here. Also under my videos about Modern Warfare 2 and the technical state of it, I got several comments of people saying, yeah, I got banned, I, I did nothing. Okay, again, I can't take these people's side because I don't know, maybe they did hack, but it feels more like this ricochet anti-cheat software that Activision's got going on. I don't know, man, there's something wrong with it. That's how it feels to me. Not recommended, killed my grandma. <laughs> Warzone 2 killed my grandmother, okay. <laughs> it's not funny, why am I laughing, okay? A grandmother has died. Call of Duty. Welcome to Warzone 2.0, the massive free-to-play combat arena. Also Call of Duty. Warzone 2.0 is only available if you buy Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Damn, man. So many comments who report the same thing. And it's not just DMZ. Like, leave your thoughts down in the comments. Do you have that same experience? That sucks, bro. With the release of this pile of garbage, my days for Call of Duty have come to an end. The game is designed for noobs and controller players, so they won't rage quit. The game state in release is pre-alpha and poorly optimized with those clowns in development. I see a dark future for Call of Duty. It's not wrong though. It does feel like pre-alpha and it just feels like early access. That, and it's just the optimization is the worst thing about the game in my opinion. Old Warzone is better in every way. The new UI sucks, new gunplay sucks, the performance is bad, the gameplay is boring. I mean, it's very simplified, but not necessarily wrong in my opinion. Please fix the game. I definitely regret paying $70 for this now. I load into a game and then crash like, what bro? No other game has this problem but this. I feel sad for these people, man. I feel sad for the people who get permabanned for no reason. I feel sad for the people who literally spend $70 on a game that crashes every minute. And Activision is not even addressing it. They're not even on their Twitter saying, yes, we know a lot of people are crashing. We think it might be this or that. We're investigating. We definitely have priority number one to fix this game for you guys and make sure that everyone who purchased the game can play it not happening they're not addressing it and that's just i mean that's awful man not recommended at least right now the game runs like crap but i put all settings to load the game still crashes no idea why they would release a game that i can't even play i meant to hit the positive review but there was an enemy behind the negative button so aim assist snapped me here <laughs> clever it's clever, isn't it? God, I hate this controller auto aim snapping stuff as well. It's freaking awful. It should be a no game, okay? If you want to balance like the skill gap between mouse and keyboard and controller, find another way of doing it, okay? Introducing an aimbot is not the solution. It sucks. Warzone 2 doesn't feel like Warzone at all. They took off what made Warzone unique and special. Looting and backpacks are terrible and they don't belong here. The gameplay is terrible and slow. It should have kept it simple. UI UX sucks, honestly. Who gave them green light for this game? I agree with the whole backpack part, like that sucks. And looting is also not as much fun. I can't really put my finger on why that is. I mean, they, they mixed it up a bit. Now you're looting a lot of like items that are on the floor and that are in cabinets and stuff. Maybe it's that, maybe it is the combination of the backpacks. But even just landing and opening crates and getting loot is not as much fun as it was in the first Warzone game. I don't know why. So there are a lot of aspects to this game where they just seem to have taken a step back. I agree with this. I just ordered a new four terabyte SSD for this game. Not recommended. <laughs> I think the install, well, I, I didn't even check. It is definitely over 100 gigabytes. Download size, 40 gigabytes. Me, wow, a few weeks later. Game size, 200 gigabytes. Is that the case? 
This game, 200 gigabytes? I didn't check. That's insane, actually. I think the previous Modern Warfare 2019 and was on set, what, like 140, something like this, altogether. 200 is off the chain. 30 FPS on an RTX 3070 in low settings. No solo mode anyway, so I wouldn't play even if it worked. RNG-based victory with teammates, same as Apex. And that's another thing, okay? Like he's saying, on an RTX 3070, I have barely any FPS difference whether I set the game to 1080p and low details or I'm playing in 1440p with high details. Okay, it's, it's really strange. Normally, if you put a game like 1080 and lower the details, you're gaining like 50 FPS. In this game, you gain 10 maybe. So that sucks. That is another indicator that just shows how poorly optimized this game is. Not recommended. This application has unexpectedly stopped working. <laughs> Not recommended. Five games of Warzone, three crashes. Not recommended. Make your freaking servers work. So I think we got a good idea now, guys, of what the reviews on Steam are all about, okay? People are not pleased. The game is not in a good state. I personally, I don't experience many crashes. I, to be honest, I never had a crash, but I do experience low FPS and I do experience laggy and desync gameplay and it just feels like garbage, okay? It doesn't feel as good as Warzone wanted. So there's a lot of work to be done for Activision, for Infinity Ward, for Sledgehammer, for all these, these companies that are involved in making this because at the moment, that's not it. We got to keep working on it. And you know, somewhere in there probably is a game that could be fun, but it feels like it's a long way off currently. And they really need to start getting to work on it if they don't want to lose that momentum, right? Because obviously everyone at the moment is hyped for it. Everyone at the moment plays it. But if these reviews are the impression that people get, and this is what people currently feel about the game, and this is kind of the long lasting memory and impression that this game leaves in people's minds at the moment, it's going to be hard to come back from that. Okay, so mostly negative comments won't do it. Activision Infinity Ward. Guys, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you hanging out here. You can like the video if you enjoyed it. You can also subscribe to the channel for more content. I would appreciate to see you in another video. Until next time, take care of yourselves and I'm out. Bye.